Welcome to another episode from Ampro Engineering. Here, as we can see, we have a grasshopper. And what we're going to do with this is fix one of the, I would say the biggest problems that has uh, plagued the grasshopper as well as the hornet. Now, when it comes to the hornet, I solved this problem a couple of years ago, but I unfortunately forgot about the grasshopper. The problem I am talking about is of course, the battery door parting ways with the car when you sneeze at it and then the battery pack dragging on the floor behind it. Very, very common with the Hornet and the Grasshopper as when the battery door is installed, the act of pushing it in this direction can very easily pop off this clip at the back, especially on a worn model, have the battery door flop off and drag your battery behind the car. The problem with that nowadays is that these lithium polymer batteries, well, they don't respond well to being dragged on asphalt and having sparks and such rain upon them. Let's solve this problem. What we can see here is one of my prototypes. And if we look a little more closely at it, this is the part that we have. This piece is going to bolt to the back of the chassis allowing the transmission tab to poke through this completely unhindered and allow you to have the battery door here. In this case, I do have one with a grasshopper. A stock one is available, or anyway, a stock looking one is available, and have the battery door simply snap like this and prevent this thing from falling off the car. Before we begin, I do want to tell you that this is only compatible with the standard grasshopper. That is the kind that has the single pivot transmission mount here. If your grasshopper has been turned into a Hornet, where it does have the rolling rigid rear axle, that part is uh, up, the part number for that one is up on screen right now. There are two versions of it, and that has been available for quite some time. We are going to focus on this video for the battery door retainer, specifically for the grasshopper. To begin, what you're going to have to do is remove all four of these screws, pull both of these hinge mounts off, and move the transmission out of the way. You probably be best, in fact, I'm going to do this here, uh, removing the rear shock mounts here and removing the entire transmission in order to get the drill a little more access back here. I'm going to go ahead and do that, and we'll begin to put some holes in here. I went ahead and pulled the transmission to the side, and this part here, if I can show you, has a little tab right here, which will slot into this tab or into this area right here. For my previous version for the Hornet, um, the feature right here actually filled this entire slot. So it made it very easy to simply stuff this in here and just screw it in place. This one here has some vertical play. So what you probably want to do is either put it in and make sure that this face on top is on the same plane as the rear edge of the chassis. Alternatively, you can actually put the battery door in place like so, and then slot this up from underneath like this. This will give you the correct height for this piece here so that the battery door does in fact latch onto it when you install it. So it's just, just make sure that you have a good fit prior to installation. Also before installation, I do wanna make sure that we drill these holes out to a 2.5 millimeter diameter or equivalent if you don't have metric bits. Any larger than that and the self-tapping screw won't properly bite. So I'm gonna drill these out real fast. I've gone ahead and drilled out these holes and I also went ahead and drilled these holes out. These are always filled with powder. It's just residual powder from the 3D printing process. I use a 1.5 millimeter drill bit, clean those out. Uh, it's pretty difficult to do that um, after you've installed this because it's hard to get the the chuck of the drill in this area. So make sure that you drill these out ahead of time. So I'm going to go ahead and install this like this. I will place that where it needs to be. And I'm gonna take this spudger here. It's just kind of a, a, a pointy tool here. Uh, honestly, the tip of a, of a silver Sharpie would work as well, a silver marker, a paint pen. And I'm just gonna put this in here and just pinpoint the center of the hole. I'm just gonna put a little dent in the chassis there and I'll do the same right here. Move this all out of the way now. And it might be a little, as you can kind of see the little dent right there and the dent right there. Can make this a little bit bigger now. This simply allows the tip of the drill bit to kind of uh, seat itself properly so it doesn't wander. I'm gonna use that same 1.5 millimeter drill bit 
and just punch this hole, oops, just punch this hole out real fast. Pretty helpful as a pilot hole. The holes that you want to drill next are going to need to clear the M3 self-tapping Tamiya screw. This would mean a three, three to 3.2 millimeter uh, hole would be good. 3.2 millimeters, roughly one eighth of an inch. If you have an eighth inch drill bit, that will work perfectly. I am going to use a 3.2 millimeter bit and just make that hole. Now, oftentimes this leaves a little bit of a residual plastic around the edges here. Always a good idea to clean those off. So I'm just gonna get my trusty blade over here. Remember that you wanna use any kind of sharp instrument so that it moves away from you and X-Acto knives are, are very, very dangerous. So please be careful. And now placing it here, the holes will align nicely. I will now thread a screw in from the back side over here. Uh, it would be best to use one of the shorter self-tapping to me screws. I believe those are eight millimeters long. Um, but the important bit here is that you make sure you don't, whatever screw that you use does not come into contact with the, uh, the leading edge of the transmission here. As you can see here, I went ahead and screwed this in. I used a little washer in there to make sure that I uh, distributed the load pretty nicely on the chassis. And you can see that these uh, screw heads protrude quite, uh, quite little from the back. It's just under a millimeter. When these snug up, you don't need to torque them down because you don't want to strip this out. So that is installed and now we're going to reinstall our transmission. And I'm gonna do this as best I can on camera so you can see how this all goes together. Let's see here, I'll put these pivots in. All right, so both of the hinges are installed and I'm going to push this back and basically that little tab will slide right into this hole. It's not gonna come into contact with anything. You're not gonna lose any kind of transmission articulation. It's just gonna pop right in there and be all set. I will go ahead and reattach everything and then put the battery door back on. Well, the car is all put back together. I will install a battery. I can wedge it in here because installation of a battery on any Hornet or Grasshopper has never been an easy task. Great, now we have a lipo thingy sticking out. Even more fun, there we go. Let's go ahead and plop that in there, like so. You'll notice as we push it forward, it pops into place. We will place a couple of cotter pins here. There's one, there we have it. That battery door is not falling off and that battery is going to be very, very safe. And that, my friends, is that. The part number for these are on the screen right now. Again, there are two options for this door if you have a grasshopper, the grasshopper version, and then one that simply has these horizontal bars like the, like the stock one. Of course, if you have a Hornet, the Hornet one is available. This, again, this particular new piece is only for a stock grasshopper with the single pivot point here. If you've upgraded your grasshopper to a Hornet, you need the Hornet style variants, and there are two different versions of those. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I really should have created this many, many moons ago. It was such a simple addition to the grasshopper that I really should have just gone ahead and bit the bullet and done it. We have lots of stuff coming up. In fact, if you always wanted a centrally mounted servo for your frog, that will be the next episode. In fact, frog or V, the whole Blackfoot uh, monster beetle and such. That'll be the next episode. And here's a little bit of an interesting tidbit. This is a Tycho Bandit, a rather loved Tycho Bandit. This is a new bumper for said Tycho Bandit, and it does not end here. If you've ever had one of these or have one buried in a loft somewhere where, where everything is broken, I have got the front bumper, rear bumper, roll bar, taillights, everything coming out for this truck. This is a little side project, as I've also got stuff for the King Cab coming out very soon. And let's not forget the Sand Scorchers massive chassis and roll cage redesign. That's going to be a huge one. Thank you all so much for watching. Before you take off, please check out the band Blue Pinto. They allow me to use all of their songs in my videos. And a link to their Facebook page is in the credits. Go ahead and subscribe if you liked this content and like the video if you did. Please feel free and comment. I'm always excited to see what you think about these products and answer any questions that you may have. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.